Hello, and welcome to the Shortgun Sportsman, a podcast about handgun hunting brought to you by Handgun Hunters International. My name is Ryan Hoover, and I'm your host. I believe handgun hunting is the most rewarding way to hunt, and it's something I want to share with as many people as I can. If you are at all interested in getting your own game meat, I want to challenge you to a way of hunting that is good for both your spirit and your body so you can become the confident, self-reliant person you were meant to be. A great handgun to hunt with is the EAB Company's BF Classic Hunting Pistol and 6.5 BRM. Or if you want to push the 158 grain XTP bullet a few hundred feet per second faster than the 357 Max, you might consider a Ruger new model Blackhawk converted to 357 Bain and Davis. Now, did you understand a word I just said? If so, good for you. For most of you, though, I assume you feel like I'm speaking Greek. In this episode, we're going to give a very basic overview of the guns and ammo used for handgun hunting, and then give some recommendations and have some discussions for what you should start with. This is going to be 101 stuff for the new shooters among us. Okay, let's start with the ridiculously convoluted world of ammunition. There is no way I could ever explain all the ins and outs of modern ammunition in one podcast episode because there's just too much there. My goal for you is to be able to be in a situation with other handgun hunters and go from a confused stare to at least a smile and nod when they talk about this stuff. Modern ammunition is made up of four parts. The bullet is the actual projectile that leaves the gun and hits the target. The powder is what gets ignited and propels the bullet down the barrel. The primer is what ignites the powder when it is detonated by the firing pin of the gun. And the case or shell is what holds everything together. When you hear the word caliber, that technically means the diameter of the bore of a gun barrel. Usually, though, people are referring to the name of the cartridge that a particular gun fires. You'll hear something like, what caliber is it? Oh, it's a 44 Magnum. Generally, the caliber is a number representing the bore diameter, followed by a name that a marketing division came up with. For instance, sticking with the 44 Magnum I just mentioned, the 44 represents a 44 caliber barrel, and the Magnum means it's longer and more powerful than other 44 caliber guns. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. Most of the time, various gun and ammunition companies have resisted any sort of standardization for naming cartridges that would make understanding them easier. Many times the actual diameter of the bore or bullet was rounded up or down to get a better sounding number that they could sell easier. For instance, the 44 Magnum and most 44 caliber handgun cartridges shoot a bullet that measures .430, so technically a 43 caliber. Add a flashy name on the end and bingo, you have an incredibly daunting system of naming cartridges. American Ammunition, confusing new shooters since 1853. One more bit of uh, technical nomenclature you need to be familiar with. The unit of measure we use to weigh both bullets and the powder inside the case is called grains. One grain equals one seven thousandth of a pound. You absolutely do not have to remember that number, except as a fun fact you can use at parties. Although, I don't know what kind of parties you're going to be going to that you'll need that, but I want to be invited. I just want you to have some frame of reference when you hear people talk about how much bullets weigh. Speaking of bullets, and remember, that is the part that comes out of the end of the barrel and hits the target, there are a few things you need to know. Because we want to be responsible hunters, always striving for quick, humane kills on whatever we hunt, it is important that you know enough about bullets to choose the correct one for your particular application. Basically, bullets are either designed to expand or penetrate on impact. Generally, the larger and tougher the game animal is, the more you want a bullet that penetrates. Small, thin-skinned game is best hunted with bullets that expand very quickly. Since most hunters in the U.S. chase deer or deer-sized animals, most commercially available hunting ammunition is loaded with bullets suitable for that kind of hunting. Let me just be clear that you by no means need to become an expert on ammunition and all the intricacies of how cartridges are named. You only need a basic understanding to know which ammunition to choose for your particular firearm and hunting application. As usual, if you have questions, please reach out. Okay, before we move on to some specific suggestions that we have regarding guns and ammo, let's go over the different types of handguns available and what they're best for. First, the semi-auto. Semi-automatic handguns hold multiple cartridges and fire one cartridge 
per one pull of the trigger. As long as a semi-auto is loaded, you can keep pulling the trigger and it will fire until it's out of ammo. This is also why you may see some older semi-autos referred to as self-loading guns. Semi-autos are everywhere these days, and I'm sure you've seen them on a police officer's belt or in any number of movies. One of the coolest movie scenes involving a semi-auto is in Saving Private Ryan, where towards the end of the movie, Tom Hanks' character fires his pistol at an oncoming tank, only to watch it blow up after being struck by a bomb dropped from a P-51 fighter plane. That's a really great scene. Semi-autos can be great field guns, for sure. A 22 pistol is a great training aid, and it is a blast to hunt squirrels and other small game with. There are several options for pistols that will handle deer-sized game. A huge advantage of hunting with a semi-auto is that you're most likely to also carry one for self-defense, maybe even the same gun. This means that training for the field will be more transferable to each use of that handgun, including a defensive use of that handgun. Semi-autos do have their limits, though. Most semi-auto pistols come in calibers that are not appropriate for deer hunting. Although they do fine in the defensive world, calibers like 380 and 9mm lack the power to be reliable in the field. To my mind, 40 Smith & Wesson is the absolute minimum caliber commonly available in a semi-auto that is appropriate for deer-sized game. And even then, you have to choose your ammo wisely. I hope you remember what we talked about earlier regarding ammo, or that last part may not have made sense. Also, in order to get semi-auto pistols to shoot big calibers capable of taking on larger game, the pistols have to be made humongous. The most famous large caliber pistol, the Desert Eagle, weighs approximately 4.5 pounds. I mean, that's almost as much as some lightweight rifles. Other attempts to put that much power into a semi-auto have had similar gigantic results. If you are interested in semi-auto pistols suitable for the most common types of hunting, there definitely are options for you out there. Again, HHI members would be glad to help with that. Specialty pistols are perhaps the most diverse group of handguns suitable for handgun hunting. Generally, with one notable exception I'll explain in a minute, specialty pistols are single shots, meaning you have to load one cartridge into the gun, fire it, and then you have to load it again before you can fire again. Additionally, specialty pistols are the only handguns commonly chambered for rifle rounds. What I mean is that many, if not all, of the cartridges that are typically found in rifles can be had in a single-shot specialty pistol as well. The two most common types of specialty pistols are break-open and bolt-action. Break-open guns are called that because the barrel of the gun actually tips forward or breaks open for loading. The most common pistol of this type is the Thompson Center Contender. Break-open guns are great because many of them have interchangeable barrels. What this means is that you can have one gun with multiple calibers. This allows you to use the same frame of the gun with the same grip and the same trigger pull, but different barrels on it for different hunting situations. With but a change of barrels, you can be ready to hunt anything. Rear grip bolt actions are the only type of specialty pistol that can be a repeater, meaning it holds more than one round of ammo in a magazine. The mechanism of a bolt-action pistol is identical to that of a bolt-action rifle. There is a handle on the side of the gun that must be lifted, pulled back, then pushed back forward and closed to unload and load the gun. Bolt-action specialty pistols have the benefit of being the easiest to make really accurate, but they are not lightweight guns. Now we get to the most common type of handgun used, the revolver. You've all seen a revolver in some point or another in your life, I'm sure. Revolvers have a cylinder in the gun, that holds the cartridges and revolves to bring each round in line with the barrel for firing. Revolvers can be divided into two types, single action and double action. Single action revolvers must have the hammer pulled back or cocked between each shot. When you pull the hammer back, the mechanism inside the gun will rotate the cylinder, lining the next cartridge up with the barrel for firing. The most famous of this type of gun is the Colt single action army. Think every John Wayne Western ever. If you ever saw the Duke using a handgun, it was almost certainly a single action. The double action is so named because there are two ways you can operate it. You can thumb the hammer back before each shot like a single action, or you can just pull the trigger and a mechanism inside will both cock the hammer and rotate the cylinder and then fire the gun. A famous example of this type of revolver is the Smith & Wesson Model 29 carried by Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry. Do you feel lucky, punk? Revolvers offer the best combination of power and portability, in my opinion, of any hunting handgun out there. You can set up revolvers for almost any type of hunting with optics, open sights, long barrels, short barrels, 
et cetera, et cetera. Revolvers, uh, th- there's a reason that revolvers are the most common type of hunting handgun. All right, now that we've gone over the basics, I'm going to talk to uh, Heath Tyler at Tyler Classic Outdoors about choosing handguns and ammo. Okay, Keith. Here we- uh, Keith, God dang it, I just called you Keith. Dude, it's all good. All right. I am not worried about it. Okay. They do it at Chick-fil-A all the time. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's funny. All right. Yes, I know your name. All right. Heath <laughs> Tyler of Tyler Classic Outdoors. Here we go. Here, here's the question, Heath. When you are considering what kind of handgun to get, um, I, I think we have four areas that I want to talk about to go over um, about things you need to consider. We're going to start with the type of game you're hunting. So when you are choosing a handgun, you definitely need to think of the type of game you're hunting. Um, you also need to think of where you're hunting it. What are some considerations that come into that? I think, uh, you know, probably for me, it's a, a lot of what has defined my choices is the range that I'm going to be shooting that game at. Gotcha. Um, you know, I think uh, the size of it, the weight of it, the distance of it, you know, all those are important factors. You mean the size, you know? the size, weight and distance of the animal that you're going to be hunting? Yes. Right. So what are some, what do you think are the most common, what, what are the most common situations that your average person wanting to get into handgun hunting is going to uh, come, come up against? I think... Um, I think for a person that's wanting to get into it, I, I'm speaking from personal experience here. Okay. So I'm not, I don't want to project my thoughts onto other people, but I'm, I know when I was getting into it, I was always concerned that, uh, that I was going to be limited by the range, the distance that I could make a shot. Um, so I would expect people who are just considering it to also, unless they're coming from bow hunting, um, I would expect them to have those same curiosities or questions. Um, so that's going to ultimately impact, you know, what they believe is capable with a particular, a particular round or a particular firearm, you know? Right. I think um, a lot of, you know, let's, let's not mince words. The number one kind of hunting that anybody's going to do with a handgun is whitetail deer. Absolutely, and that of course that varies but like we mentioned last episode there you do not have to limit yourself if you want to take game at long ranges you know hundreds of yards away that's that's you're perfectly um gonna you're gonna find a a gun that will fit that need just fine if you if you want to hunt at bow ranges you're gonna find that you need to you need to kind of determine that based on you know what i'm saying is if you're already a hunter fitting a handgun into your hunting method is perfectly feasible. If you're not already a handgun hunter, consider the kind of opportunities you have around you for, um, for, you know, hunting. So like, I know both of us hunt in places that are pretty heavily wooded and, you know, hundred yard shots are long shots. And so when we consider a handgun, we have a lot more options because, you know, the, most of the handguns suitable for handgun hunting will kill an, a deer at 100 yards. Um, it's up to the hunter, of course. The, uh, the other thing, you know, a lot of people think, think about deer hunting, but I, I think the number one, when, when I tell people I'm a handgun hunter, they, they automatically start thinking about pigs. Ah, uh, yeah. You know? And pigs have been the most loved nuisance animal of all time, I think. <laughs> you know, like where I'm at, where I'm at, it's gone from people hate pigs to people found out that they could charge you 500 bucks to kill one. And yep. so, but then you have wildlife guys thinking, you know what, we got to get rid of this species that's just destroying so much of our land. So, you know, like we talked about, people who have a lower opinion of that game animal are more likely to say, Oh, we can hunt it with a handgun because even if a handgun is not as effective, we don't care because we're just hunting pigs. None of that is true. None of that is the way you should think, but pigs are another really widely hunted animal with handguns and a lot of opportunities for hunting pigs. There are just tons of opportunities for pig hunting. 
and handguns are perfectly at home for whether you're in the swamps in Florida, the woods in our neck of the woods, or some of the deeper forest, or you're hunting open country like in California, if they'd still let you hunt with handguns, uh, they have some more open country. Yeah, I know plenty of people who don't handgun hunt, but they have a pig pistol. Yep, yep. I, me exactly, me too. So when you think when you think about that, that just keep that. That's one piece of information you need to have in your mind about what kind of hunting you want to do, and. You know, I should stop and say here that as we, as you become a more proficient and prolific handgun hunter, you can always add to your arsenal later, but we're, we're just talking about getting started here. So the next thing, if you're thinking about, let's just say, um, since both of us do the same similar type of hunting, we'll go through this exercise. So we would say, if we're both brand new, we would say we're going to be hunting deer. We're going to be probably, uh, limiting our shots to what? 50 yards. If we're just starting. We'll just, I think so. we'll, we'll just say that. And then the next thing we're going to think about is our recoil sensitivity. So I, I've said this before, and I will keep saying this every time we talk about this topic. There is no reason for you to be shy about how much recoil you can take. It, it doesn't, it doesn't flipping matter. you know. <laughs> uh, right. And uh, there are guys out there who, who, who love the big boar stuff and that's fine. And they're guys and girls who are just naturally like recoil impervious. They just don't care and they'll shoot any gun really well. Um, but you need to be realistic about what your capabilities are. Um, so what would you, based on what you know, you know, you, you, you're a gun dealer and you, you serve the handgun hunting community based on your experience talking to a bunch of people and selling handguns. What would you think the average, recoil sensitivity is both in truth and in people's own assessment of themselves. Um, so you would you say as far as what what do most most people consider to be a caliber that has high recoil? Or... I mean, yeah, you can put it that way for sure. It, it could just be. Yeah, you could put it that way or you could apply what you know about a certain caliber to say that they would probably not be able to handle that or they could handle that. Yeah. I think a lot of people who are first becoming curious about handgun hunting look at the 357 because, you know, maybe they're not familiar with, you know, any with other calibers or maybe they know that's something that they can handle. Um, and they immediately start to analyze, is that enough gun? Right. Um, and, you know, it's funny. These days uh, we have some debates about what is enough gun. And it's kind of interesting to me that it seems – I mean, I'm probably going to get some feedback from this, but it seems kind of settled that 357 is definitely capable of, of taking deer. I know I'm a big proponent of it. I hunt mostly with a 357. I mean, a lot of that is because our deer are so small down here that it's it's, and I'm shooting it under 50 yards. But I think, you know, one of the things that I would love I love about our community and about the people who are so supportive in it is that you, like, I'm a big guy. I'm six feet tall, 240 pounds. So you look at me and you're like, that guy, he can handle it, right? I'm I'm pretty recoil sensitive. Like I have to yeah. work hard to be able to handle big bore guns. Um, and I'm, pff, I, I don't care what you think of me for that, you know? And I remember you, you, you had a story about recoil when you first started. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, one of the first ones that I, that I, the first, the first fire handgun I ever carried into the woods was a 41 mag. And, uh, I had never shot anything above probably a 22 handgun at that point. And, uh, yeah, it, it got a hold of me, you know, and, and I was, uh, you know, I was intimidated by it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Now likewise. I look at it and go a 41, was it's pretty easy to shoot now, you know, but, um, but at the time, yeah, it, it was, I had developed, uh, uh, some bad habits. Yeah, for know? sure. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Uh, and, um, one of the things that, you know, you saying that brings to mind is the fact that to a degree recoil tolerance is something that can be learned, you know, like as you, you, you don't have to say, I just can't handle big recoil. You can say, look, right now, I just want to get into the woods, so I'm going to start with a 357 or whatever it is, whatever you yeah. can handle. And then, 
I'm going to step it up from there. I want to learn how to shoot this bigger gun because I have dreams of going on a moose hunt or a, a bear hunt or whatever it is. Uh, so you, my, my biggest message that I want to get out to anybody considering this is do not let recoil be a hindrance to your jumping in. 100% agree with that. You can always work up. You can always get better. You can always improve your skills. Um, that's that's what I had to do. I had to go back down, you know, in caliber um, same. and work my way back up. So Same here. Yep, absolutely you know. the same here. Okay, so next is considering the budget. Um, I What do you think realistically somebody should budget to get into a – uh, just the gun, because as we know, it's not likely. I mean, the most common ways guns are sold are just bare guns, no accessories on them. You know, sometimes they'll have a scope mount, sometimes not. So just getting into that, what do you think people are th- thinking budget? Well, you know, I think a lot of that depends on some of these other questions. But I think, you know, an entry-level gun, we've seen those CBA single shots do very well, and they're a sub-$400 gun. Right. Um, that's a great starting place. And I, I recommend everybody to start there, you know, um, that, I think that's a great place that, and, uh, you know, maybe if they wanted to put a red dot on it or something so that they get, you know, get used to the, you know, uh, optics on a handgun, um, yeah. just to kind of get started. I think that's a great place to start. I agree. Um, I th- that's probably the most gun for your money out there right now is that CVA scout. Um, a hundred percent. agree. Yeah. I think, you know, however, that, that is a, we'll get into this in just a little bit, but that's a single shot heavier gun. And so somebody who wants to, let's say like, okay, that is the entry level, right. For just a single shot gun, but it's not a gun you can put on your hip and and walk in the woods. So, uh, talking about packable guns, what do you think you need to budget for You know, uh, right now you run into availability issues on packable guns, it seems like. I, You know, um, if you wanted to pick up a Taurus, I think they're, you know, probably seven, eight hundred bucks, something like that. Yeah. And if you want one of the other models, you can sometimes find their tracker models for cheaper as well. I've seen their tracker Um, models for around five. Yeah. About for around five Mm -hmm. bills. And you can easily pack that into the woods. Sure. Um, if you're really super sleuth at it, you can sometimes find some single action Rugers around that same price point. Used on uh, used on the internet. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, pawn shops, that type of thing. Right. They're out there if you look, you know. Um, and that's to me, that's that's as good a way to get started as anything, you know. That's right. And I think so. Probably we're thinking in the four to eight hundred dollar range. If you, I know that's a wide range, but depending on what kind of game you've hunted. So, for me, I love revolver hunting. So I'm thinking I'm in the woods. I'm in Texas. I want to keep my shots fifty yards or, or less. I want my the revolver that I have is a Ruger 357, and yep. so I'm. I mean, the one that I have, we're probably in the you know eight hundred dollar range for that that gun. Where you are, and I know based also on your love for single shots. Um, you know, you were probably in a similar price range, right? Do you think you can get into the max for that much? You're the contender. I think, yeah, I think yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. including optic, obviously, but sure. uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. Lastly, uh, think about what you have available. You know, we've talked about this before about whether or not certain types of guns that might be in the nightstand are, um, recommended calibers to take into the woods to chase medium sized game like deer and pigs. And to me, that's the wrong question. The question to ask is if you want to get into the field, what do you have? And then take what you have and match that to any hunting opportunities that you, you might be able to find. So for instance, you know, we have a great member who's just an pretty much an expert on all things, semi-auto hunting. And, uh, if you have grandpa's old 45, you know, the, the 45 ACP, that's, that's a perfectly capable deer cartridge at short ranges. You know, if you have a nine millimeter, go small game hunting, go rabbit hunting or something like that. If you have a 22, like I love my 22s, squirrel hunting, small game hunting for sure. So always think about what you already have 
available before you, I mean, I know getting new guns is probably the best part about <laughs> doing this, but you know, think about, think about what you already have, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's how I justified, uh, uh, you know, playing with that 22 K Hornet for a while was, I think I'm going to get into predator hunting. Yeah. yeah. I never really did, but I got my barrel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now that you've, let's just say someone's decided on their gun. The next thing they're going to have to decide on is the ammo. This is uh, this is this can kind of be a tricky, controversial subject because of certain areas about it, and because a lot of handgun hunters have experiences that tend to lead them to one camp or another, you know, with different kinds of ammo. But basically, the first thing you need to consider is whether you know. Let's just say talking about 357 because it's it's ubiquitous as as a um, target gun, a hunting gun, and a self-defense gun. So there's a lot of different kinds of ammo out there. So you're going to need to match the type of hunting you do with the type of ammo you shoot. I'm not, I'm not going to talk specifically about what, you know, what kind of ammo you should get for a 357, but I do, I will say, you know, like make sure you're getting ammo that's hunting ammo, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it can be confusing to a novice, especially where you're just like, oh, that's 357. It fits in my gun. I can shoot it. And then they accidentally go into the woods with a full metal jacket bullet, which is a bullet that is completely encased with a copper jacket, meaning it doesn't expand. It just makes one 35 caliber hole through an animal. So, um, and I think, you know, it, when you get into the more esoteric guns that are specifically for hunting, you know, the big boars, four, five, four, stuff like that, you're more likely to find hunting ammo only for them. But what are some of the things that people need to look for to make sure that the ammo that they're getting is for hunting? Shoot. I would say, you know, just, just, look for something that number one, you can find reviews on almost any website, you know, that say, okay, I shot this animal with this and it worked or it didn't or whatever. Um, without going too far down the rabbit trail of comparing the different types of bullets and all that, you know, um, that would be my number one tip to somebody that's looking. Um, but also, you know, uh, I don't, I don't personally believe self-defense ammo is, is a good, if it's, if it's marketed as a self-defense round, I don't think it's typically good for hunting. Yeah. Um, I hear you on that. Um, so generally it's going to be somewhere in the middle between your target rounds, which are a full metal jacket or your self-defense, which is, uh, you know, something that's very rapidly expanding. Right. So you if you're, <laughs> you know, I tend to want to go down this road, but yeah. I know that's not what we're doing. Yeah, but, I know. It's, t- it's tough. It's called the curse of knowledge. The, yeah, I, uh, the thing- I don't want to expand too much on expanding. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll get it. We'll get, we'll get into that uh, on, on another episode. I'm sure, man, I'm sure we can make multiple episodes on just bullets alone. But, oh, um, yeah. you know, another thing, a real simple tip is look, if you're, if you're hunting with factory ammo, look for hunting ammo look for ammo marketed as hunting ammo you know um hornady has their handgun hunter line out now um i don't know a lot about it i've i've heard some decent reviews about it the only one i've only ever shot it in a 454 and never had an animal uh so i don't have any experience but that's just an example of this ammo is designed for that yeah um the next topic i'm going to jump ahead is whether or not you should shoot factory ammo or reload your own now i know what you're going to say well i'm going to say uh do what works for you i mean you know uh when i first got into reloading um you know uh, it was because i chose odd calibers that i couldn't buy ammo for Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, that is one of the things about handgun hunting is there are a lot of guns that you can't get ammo for, you know, or you can, it's very hard. It's availability is very low. 
two things. Make sure that the gun you're buying, if you don't want to reload, make sure that there's factory ammo readily available for it. And two, know that if you do want to reload, that's a whole nother worm hole that you're going to have to go down. And uh, we will, we'll go over that in a, in a future episode. But um, it adds expense because you have to get you have initial expense at least because you have to get all the equipment and whatnot to, to set up to be able to reload. But if you want to reload, then you know I'll just say right here, go for it because it's a lot of fun. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's the best. Um, just to recap uh, about choosing your gun and ammo, thinking about you know going through my my specific situation, you know I would say what kind of handgun do I want? I'm going to be hunting deer at 50 yards or less in high density woods. I'm I'm somewhat sensitive to recoil. My budget's probably around 800 bucks, so I would be going for you know whatever fits into that. So think about the type of game you're hunting, your sensitivity to recoil, your budget, and what handguns you already have available to you. And another thing you can say about that is maybe somebody you know will let you borrow one or sh- at least shoot one to see if you like it. I mean, I know that I have a standing offer. If anybody wants to shoot any of my guns, I'd be glad to bring them out and we can do that. And if anybody I trusted said, hey, I want to get into this, I would let them borrow one as well. So th- 100%. Th- yeah, think about think about what you already have available. And then when you're choosing your ammo, make sure that you're not buying target ammo to take into the woods. Make sure you're getting a good solid bullet or not a solid bullet, but a, you know, like, you know what I mean? I'm about to step in it here. You know, not, (laughs) not that that bullet is solid, but that it, it, it does solid work on game animals. Right. Make sure it has integrity. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Make sure you have a, a bullet with integrity and, uh, and then, you know, if you if you decide that you uh, want to get into reloading, just, you know, do your research before that. I will say sometimes you'll you when you're going to select your handgun, you can find one that's a deal, you know, and you might get excited about this gun being a few hundred dollars cheaper than the other one and make sure that it's not because there is no ammo available for it. You know, there are several calibers out there that is very difficult to find and sometimes make ammo because you have to form it from a different case, which we'll get into in a future episode. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. it's. I mean, just consider all that because it's really easy to get yourself in, a, in trouble on that. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I think we may have intimated at where we're going to go with this question, but next I want to talk about your recommendation for the best caliber for a beginner. And again, we're going to be talking about deer hunters because that is what at least 90% of the people are going to be hunting. Ah, shoot. I I don't see that there's any reason that a person couldn't get started with a revolver in 357. If you want to pack the thing in, you know, they make that in the single shot variety as well. You know, there's plenty of contender barrels out there in 357. I, I think that's a great caliber to get started with it's a great caliber to end with too, you know, so you're not compromising anything by using it. And then there's, there's a few, you know, like, uh, some of the, uh, single shots out there, there's the 300 blackout, which is pretty common. Yep. Um, and that's available in that, that, uh, inexpensive CVA scout we were talking about. Absolutely. It is. And there's such a popular, uh, a popular round that a lot of people already have ammo for the 300 blackout. Right, so exactly. that's a good one to get started with. I feel like, you know, um, I think either one of those are a great, a great place to start. If you're, you find that you're not sensitive to the recoil, I think probably one of the best all around calibers is the 44 mag. Like for you sure. just, you just, you just can't beat it. You know, a couple of things, um, uh, a couple of things. First, I want to, completely echo i highly recommend the 357 magnum as a best caliber for a beginner to start with you have to um that is not you know 357 magnum is not a magic round it is not going to um, make up for your mistakes if you make them but it is a great round for you to learn and become proficient with and if you do your due diligence and you set your own limitations, for instance, if you can only keep your shots inside the vitals of an animal that you're hunting at 25 yards, then you just don't shoot past that in the field. If that's one of the self-discipline areas that any handgun hunter has to uh, be good at. 
But uh, for me, that's definitely the best cartridge for a beginner. But you mentioned the 44 Magnum. I agree. Probably if I could only ever own one handgun ever again, it would be a 44 Magnum because you could do anything with it. Yeah. I know um, I know that at certain times, like the market's been flooded, I, not so much now, but back, you know, especially in the late 20th century, the market was flooded at times with 44 Magnums that people had bought, shot a cylinder through, and then sold because they didn't like how much it kicked. So if you own one of those or somebody has one of those available, there are so many more lower recoil rounds that you could shoot or loads that you could shoot through that you don't have to shoot the biggest boominess maximum 44 mag load out of it and also people forget you can shoot 44 specials through that too and you can make some pretty good deer rounds out of 44 specials you might have to reload uh, or go to a company like buffalo bore or something like that but you know don't don't think, oh man, this is too much recoil for me. There's nothing I can do about it because you may be able to download your bullet weight. You may be able to have someone reload something that's more comfortable for you to shoot or in those Magnum guns, you know, the 40, 44 mag shoots 44 special, 357 shoots 38 special, even the 454 Casul shoots 45 Colt. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's just another thing to be aware of. But yeah, that not to not to overshadow the three fifty seven because I think it's probably honestly the the ultimate round for a beginner. Yeah. And hey, I still I'm taking a as we record this, my season starts in two days and I'll have my three fifty seven on my hip to start. That's right. Okay, so moving on to this question. I'm gonna list some types of guns and I want you to tell me your favorite single favorite. You can only pick one. <laughs> you know how indecisive I am about guns. Right? I know that's man. not fair. <laughs> hey, hey, you got to do it. You got. I do want it. them all. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite, and you know, favorites can be right now. Your fa- if if you know if in a future episode you're like, hey, I changed my mind about that one. You let me know. Yeah. Okay. okay. For, but okay. right now, your favorite one gun for each of these categories. You ready? Yep. Semi-auto. You know, I don't have a lot of experience with a semi-auto, but I think if I was going to choose a semi-auto, it would probably be some form of a 1911. Classic. Um, probably in 10 millimeter or, uh, you know, like a 45 Super or something like that. Classic. Yep. Yep. Uh, mine, I'm a, I do not have much experience either hunting – uh, medium game with a with a semi-auto so mine would definitely be the ruger mark 3 22 oh you flipped the script on me i'm yeah. there i am again thinking about deer yeah that's that, but, that's but, totally mine but i mean 100 agree with that my uh i mean or the mark 4 now any of the any of those uh yeah semi-automatic 22s i i love my i love my target mark 3 Ruger Mark III, and uh, it's my squirrel gun, and it's also my training gun. You know, I, I begin and end every range session with at least one magazine out of that gun just to calm myself, get my sight picture, follow through down, you know, get get in the mindset. Uh, I love that thing. Okay, specialty pistol. Uh, and this is, an this easy is one my for, favorite right, category yeah, know, right this here. Is an easy one for you. Uh, the contender, hands down. Yeah. Love them, love them, love them. Wake up thinking about them at night. Yeah, I know. You are. When your wife's out of town, do you just put all your contenders and barrels in her spot in the bed? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do sit on the couch and just hold them while I'm watching TV. There you go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a good dry fire practice, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in the contender, what is your favorite length barrel? 12 inch. Okay, man, I, I don't know. This, this one's actually tough for me. Uh, I, I love contenders. Here's the funny thing. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to talk through this one. I, my initial reaction is to say a center grip XP 100. Yeah. Um, that's where I go to. Here's the thing. I don't own a center grip XP 100. I, I, I used to build them. Uh, and I've shot them and I love them, but I, there's something about, I don't know. I don't know what it is. There's just something about it. 
um, just the way they look with a Macmillan stock. They, and I'm talking about a custom one, not not a factory one. You know, with yeah. a Macmillan stock, that those to me are just so so cool. Um, but it's a toss up because I have a contender, and I have. I think I have like nine barrels for it at this point. So it's kind of, am I saying that the XP 100 is my favorite just because I really want one right now? You know, I'm just like, <laughs> it's the grass is greener situation here. Yeah. Or because I love the contender as well. You know, I yeah. I really, really love the contender and the, the switch barrel ability is just, oh man, that's a tough one. I, I'm gonna just because you said contender, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a contrarian and say mine mine's the XP100 center grip custom center grip. Okay, <laughs> uh, um, revolver. What's your favorite revolver? See, this is a hard one for me because what I consider to be my favorite, I don't know, probably a Blackhawk. There's something about them, man. It's just romantic. They're just, they're That's just, true. they're just, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I shoot better with a Red Hawk, okay? That's what I'm trying to say here. Oh, I see. But, but man, a Black Hawk is just, dude, I don't know. I just can't, they're not, it's not as bad as a contender, but I can't get away from them. I think I've owned more Black Hawks than anything. Really? And I just, I just keep coming back to them. I didn't know yeah. that. Yep. For me, probably, shoot. I mean, it's probably the Blackhawk. Probably the Blackhawk because my I have such good Blackhawk. It was my first handgun. Is that my 357 Bisley stainless Blackhawk was my first handgun that I ever bought myself. Um, it's the gun that when I decided to get into handgun hunting, I was like, oh, I have this gun. I'm gonna take it to the woods. So that's probably my favorite. Okay. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. Please, um, Heath, I really appreciate your input. Appreciate you being here with me. And anybody oh, listening, uh, if you have any questions about this, please reach out to us at Handgun Hunters International. We love helping people. Members are not members. Obviously, we want you to be a member. But even if you're not, we are just aiming to get you into the field with a handgun. So please reach out to us if you have any questions. And thank you very much. This episode is brought to you by Handgun Hunters International. Handgun Hunters International is the premier organization for handgun hunters. We have a cool website where we have a great, well-moderated forum that is friendly to all ages and experience levels. The Six Gunner, which is our bi-monthly digital magazine, is written exclusively by HHI members and is free to the public. We host giveaways of guns, gear, and ammo each month, and every prize is worth several times what membership costs. We also trade info with the industry, and we want to have more influence there as we grow. Help us fulfill our mission of supporting and growing the handgun hunting community by joining today at handgunhuntersinternational.com. Again, if you have any questions on how to get started in handgun hunting, please reach out to me at ryan at handgunhuntersinternational.com. We may even have an HHI member in your area that you can connect with for further help. Please leave us a review and don't forget to follow Handgun Hunters International on social media at Handgun Hunters INT. Thank you all and good hunting. <laughs>